So uh, again, my name is Igor Goshensky, and I'm a principal architect for Yahoo. And this presentation is a uh, case for a new approach to networking uh, in warehouse scale data centers. So first of all, what is a warehouse scale data center? Uh, it's a large data center. Um, about a year ago, we uh, publicly said that our latest design at that point in time housed 120,000 servers. Uh, again, that was about a year ago. Uh, these are pretty beefy servers. They uh, have up to 24 cores exposed to the operating system. Um, it, most of them are dual slot, uh, six core Westmere, so uh, hyper-threading, um, you get 24 cores. If you enable virtualization uh, in that data center, uh, you end up, uh, you can easily have 20 VMs per, uh, uh, per server and uh, giving up a couple to the hypervisor, to the uh, vSwitch or whatever you have. That is 2.4 million VMs in a single data center. That is if you virtualize it. Um, a warehouse scale data center also has a massive amount of east to west uh, bandwidth. Uh, it is highly distributed. Uh, there's a massive amount of crosstalk. Uh, if you think about a case of Hadoop, uh, if a Hadoop cluster is 20,000 nodes, that is not you know, some host talking to other, uh, some other host, that is 20,000 hosts talking in a full mesh between each other. Um, that is pretty different from a typical enterprise data center where you have an app server talking to a web server and you know, a bunch of clients connecting to it. Other attributes of warehouse uh, scale data centers is that uh, they're not just built willy-nilly. Um, these are very large systems, uh, very complex management uh, of them. Uh, we have uh, inventory management systems that actually know everything about the data center, uh, or as much as we can. We have a graph of network elements, so we know exactly how they're connected. It's not arbitrary topologies. Uh, we know where every server physically is in the data center. Uh, we know every rack position. We know uh, every wire that goes into the server and where that wire goes to. We obviously know IP address of every server because we had to add that to DNS. <coughs> Uh, we also know the MAC address of every server because, well, we can get that from vendors, we can log into it, pretty easy. And in order to actually pixie boot a server, you need to know the MAC address of the server in order to know what IP to give it to, in order to know what role the server is going to be in the data center. Um, so again, the attributes are very large, a lot of east to west bandwidth, and we know quite a bit about the internal topology of the data center. So one of the problems facing uh, warehouse scale data centers has been topology discovery. What you have today is that uh, if you look, the routers are spending about 30% of their CPU doing nothing but redoing that topology discovery that we actually have in our databases. They're doing uh, ARP and MAC binding discovery very often every 30 seconds for every node in the data center. On top of that, they're then doing ISIS, OSPF, spanning tree, rapid spanning tree, trill, SPB you name it, uh, in order to figure out where the topology recursively resolves to. Uh, well, that's highly inefficient, especially since I already have all this in a database. And uh, a lot of uh, data center architecture cha uh, challenges and changes in the past several years, uh, we've actually had to uh, push out the L2, L3 boundary uh, very close to the uh, server um, for no other reason than that was the only way to scale. It wasn't that we architecturally believed that to be the better solution, it just that was the only way to make things work. And uh, with software-defined networking, we don't need to do that anymore. Since we have all this in the database, and SDN provides a very nice, clean API separation for how we can send it from the database right into the network, why don't we just program it and not bother doing this discovery? And we don't need to program everything. We could simply say, ARP and MAC, that stuff is easy. Uh, that, those bindings rarely change. Even with virtualization, when you have VM ability, um, a virtualization controller knows exactly you know, where the VM was, where VM's going to, so the virtualization controller also knows all this information. We can easily program it. Topology discovery, that could be debated whether that's better done as a distributed system uh, or as a centralized way or a hybrid of uh, in between. Uh, but at least, uh, I don't know if anybody who argues against ARP and MAC binding being uh, programmed from a central place. So otherwise, uh, let's be honest. We're doing this to make things cheaper. <laughs> um, so today, uh, as I'm sure you've seen uh, in all the previous talks, uh, a switch has a control plane that you buy from a vendor, a management plane that takes the information from the control plane and pushes that into the forwarding plane. All that is one monolith of box. Well, that's not very cost effective. Uh, when a new, if a new vendor comes to me and says, hey, I've got this new switch, it's half the price per port, it is 10x the density, it's awesome, 
I have to go, I've never heard of you. How do I know that you get basic things like OSPF right? You wouldn't believe the, the number of vendors that come into us and say, hey, test out this piece of gear. And we test it and find out that they decided that in order to optimize uh, SPF processing, they say there must be 100 milliseconds or some unit of time quietness between recalculations, at which point I know the network has converged, and then I perform an SPF run. Well, as the number of LSAs in the network grows, you will get to a point where statistically, that period of quietness will never happen. And we've seen that you know, some piece of gear didn't run an SPF recalc for six days. Because <laughs> um, that becomes challenging to introduce new vendors. Uh, if you suffer a control plane from a management forwarding plane, you can keep the same control plane as you've had before and simply swap in a new vendor uh, because it's simply a change of hardware. Uh, similarly, you could keep all the hardware to, uh, separately and you swap in a new control plane. The other benefit is uh, if you're buying bleeding edge products, you know stuff that big vendors just ship, uh, we've had cases where uh, a vendor comes up with a brand new hardware platform and hardware absolutely rocks. But there's this, every new hardware platform requires a new version of code and uh, that new version of code has a problem with a control plane. And we wait for 18 months for a unrelated control plane problem to be resolved before we can actually introduce a new piece of hardware. Um, SDN clearly has advantages in both the current vendors and new vendors uh, as a way to rapidly uh, introduce new hardware into a data center ecosystem. Also, another advantage of SDN is automation. Today, anybody of large size has pretty powerful configuration templating tools. I mean, we've created our own language around routing policies and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then those templating tools have uh, config generators that then translate the template into every vendor specific speak. And then we have configuration deployment tools that push them out. Well, the templating tools are great. The configuration deployment tools are awful. Honestly, they're expect. Uh, for anybody that played with expect, that is a very, very, very bad way to uh, actually push configuration. Um, but it's one of the few ways that we actually have. And uh, then you also run into issues of, I've pushed it via expect, but then um, 30 lines of config just didn't make it into the box. So you have to have very complex uh, systems to make sure that where you actually try to push out, made it there, made it there intact, and et cetera. With software-defined networking, it's a general API. It makes things easy to actually push. And if the general API is abstract enough, you won't even need the config generators that will do translation from template into, um, into the particular syntax. Again, it makes introduction of new vendor, device, OS, whatnot, much, much easier. Also, um, it's a way to get faster innovation into the network. How many people have gone through this? You go to a vendor and you go, hey, we thought of this really cool thing that if we had it would make our life a ton easier. Can we get this new little feature, please? Because mm, something has a limit of 32 and I need to raise to 64. And the vendor goes, <laughs> say what? How much uh, revenue will I get from doing this? At which point you have two choices. You go, I give you money. Or you go, um, do this or I won't buy any more product from you. Or you go, do this or I will take whatever spend I was going to give you. Here's the PO that you were going to get, and I'm going to give it to your nearest competitor. At which point the vendor goes, that's nice, but you're too small. I don't care. Or the vendor goes, oh, crap. <laughs> They're serious. They've done this before. Um, you get it in 18 months, which is about how fast we can turn a feature around with uh, all the testing. Well, that creates a lot of conflict. And uh, some people don't like the conflict. And even if you like the conflict, they're just not a good way of doing business. So what SDN will do is uh, actually, by separating the control features from forwarding hardware features, it'll allow you to innovate much faster. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'll allow you to innovate much faster. Uh, it allows you to create the plugins for control plane um, without having to go to your vendor. And you can uh, similarly get hardware improvements without having to change a control plane. You make things faster and the whole cycle becomes more rapid. Because right now, you need to wait for both to be right before you can make any change. By separating it out, it's a lot easier. And you have a chance to influence the entire system. If we wanted to change the way that you do forwarding based on um, different primitives, uh, you can do that with SDN. 
uh, we had an idea of uh, like a new forwarding architecture that was based on uh, source Mac or destination Mac rewrite. No software would support it, no hardware would support it. We were just posed. Um, if we could just go, well, we'll take care of the software, somebody else will create, uh, take care of the hardware, we could actually get that feature uh, in, and we might have actually had it by now. But uh, without SDN, that's just not a reality. So that's basically uh, how SDN is uh, useful in, uh, in warehouse scale data centers, and a lot of it has been going on for quite a while, and uh, continuing of this uh, and moving it forward is a great thing. So thank you. <laughs>